Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a heat kit sign square audio generator model IG18. It is all transistor and modern design. I think we got eight transistors in this one and it is from 1969. So it was back then where transistors, they were really still exotic and expensive. So they always uh, tried to use as few of them as possible. It handles um, 1 hertz to 100 kilohertz. And it is a little bit special from uh, many other uh, generators. We got a little bit of a special way to set the frequency using four knobs like this. So the first one is a multiplier. And there you have it, the tens, the ones, and a variable point one or a zero to one. So if you put it here, it's 0.2 of a Hertz. The decimal point here is difficult to read. Look at that. <laughs> I think it is a little bit crazy to do it this way, to be honest, but that is just the way it's done. It got square wave and sine wave output at the same time with two individual attenuators. So here's a switch for the attenuation and variable. And it's the same here. Maybe we should try and open and look. And this is very close to what I expected. I really like the design idea with the circuit boards mounted like this. There is a hole in this chassis plate under the circuit boards. So you can access both sides of the circuit boards and perform very easy service. And this is a design a lot of um, brands, they really, really lack this service friendliness. But of course, this is also a kit and the, one of the design goals I would expect is also to teach people how to do stuff really, really good and smart. I can see some adjustments are done here to the different multipliers. We've got some funny wires going on right there and some green slime. That reveals uh, somebody's been trying to clean the contacts. Also, I see this capacitor here is cracked. And I bet all those capacitors, they are more or less long gone. That will be the secondary side of the transformer with a sensor tab and this rectifier here and all that. So there's a scene diode and a transistor, and that's more or less what there is to say about this power supply. But I think we should change those capacitors. Oh yeah, here we got the, the little bulb. And this is for level compensation in the uh, sine wave oscillator. And then there is a Smith trigger to, uh, to make it into a square wave. Not that many transistors to be found here, huh? Really, really old. 1969 is also definitely something. I think somebody tried to replace or repair the missing capacitors by just adding some more capacitors instead of just replacing what kind of a, I don't know what that is. And here is mains fuse. 
Mm. Nah, I think we can fix this so it's not so dodgy. This repair. And here we got the outputs and all that. Some more flying. Oh, that's the output attenuator. Yeah, well, I will definitely remove those capacitors and see if I can do a nice clean up here first. Don't you just love it when some people repair stuff? They do it this way, so they try to repair a missing capacitor or a missing value, but they added two capacitors in series with bleeder resistors like that. Ah, that is something. Let's try and measure the capacitors. So that would be actually I took out all four capacitors from the power supply. So the tiny little one that is on the output measures 70 micro and it says 50 micro. So this is good, but the big ones, see this is the broken one, nano, really? We're down to 30 nano, so they're completely, and see, what well, kind of, they say 300, and then 60 volts, yeah, don't work at all. So here is the schematic of this uh, heat kit unit. It's, uh, as always, really nice and easily uh, explained. I kind of like heat kit schematics. So if we uh, look at the bottom left, we see the power supply schematic. And this is where we have all the problems. What they have done here is a little bit funny. They, um, they got C1 and C2 and then a little resistor in between them to filter and prepare the... DC voltage, and then there is a Zener diode and a uh, emitter follower uh, transistor, and then there is another one of those 300 uh, micro um, capacitors on the base of the transistor. And the fun thing is, uh, the only capacitor that worked in my unit was the 50 um, on the output. <laughs> Imagine that. And uh, they clearly explain how to uh, wire, rewire the primary side of the transformer for either 120 or 240 volts. So that is uh, really nice. In the manual, we also find a nice X ray view of the two circuit boards. This way, we can easily see what is connected to what, where is everything located. And it's uh, really nice to find our ways around this uh, whole unit. So that is, uh, yeah, that's really good. I really like how easy it is to access both of the uh, circuit boards from the bottom. And this makes service so, so easy. I cleaned the power supply a little bit here after my fixie fixie. I put in couple of new capacitors. The fun thing is this uh, output capacitor here, they also made holes for the new kind of style capacitors. And I put in 470 instead of uh, 300, so I should have uh, plenty. So I think it is about time to uh, start playing around with this unit. But there's another little fun thing that I note about this uh, Heathkit case here and that will be the funny corner corners so those little metal brackets we got four of them that's hiding this little handle thing here and this screw and the fun thing is one of them is missing and this screw is original but if I 
Go to my little spare part. Stock of heat kit mechanical parts. I, of course, have exactly what is needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think... It, I definitely think this is... This is the right part. And now it is nice and perfect. I don't know about those handles. Do you really like these? It's difficult to get your fingers in here and grab those. I mean, it's easier just to grab them here, but then you need two hands, obviously. So let's try and see what happens. If we power this thing. See, there's of course a little bit of warm up. Here's the AC that is in la 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 la. Okay, oh, this is good. So what have have I done? I set the multiplier 100 times 10 is 1 kilo zero zero and it reads 994 okay what if I take this one all the way up should it be 1 so 994 <laughs> Then it's 1.1. 1 .1. So that means this one gives a lot more. Ah, it's the first part. Look at that. So now it's 1,000 and a half. Or something like that, right? Okay, so it's way too much so this is 100 hertz ah oh yeah yeah look at that it's because i'm an idiot look at that it's the multiplier everything is multiplied by 100 Ay. that is of course how it is so this is 1000 one hundred and this is ten. No, not exactly. Because this here is one times one hundred. So this is doing one hundred. So this is doing. Let me put this down again. So now we are. If I put this for exactly one thousand. What happened if I dial this up? That is also 100. Aha. Uh -huh. One step here is 1. 100, 200. Yeah, and it is exactly. Oh, you need to look at this. Let me try and show this number here. So here's the frequency. So I do it again. And one back, and one more. Look at the frequency. Is it really possible to make it that accurate? 400, nearly. 500, or nearly. 600, nearly, yeah. 700, 8. I mean, it's really, really close. <laughs> okay, so if this is 100 hertz per step, then this is 1 kilohertz per step, right? Yes, it is also 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... This is eight. Ah, okay. Now it's going a little bit. 
But anyway. And what can it do? This one was supposed to be able to do 100 kilohertz. So if we crank this all the way up. Crank this scope a little bit up. So this is nearly 10 kilohertz. And then this is, of course, nearly 100 kilohertz. And then you need to dial up 107. I mean, <laughs> for its age, I was I was really skeptical about these um, dials and the way that this works. But I mean, I may be able to um, suck it back or something like that because this is the. This is 10 volts peak peak, and that is 2. Look at that. This is also 10 volts peak peak. How about that? The accelerator is working. Amplitude. I mean. What can I say? This damn thing works! It is really, really stable. I don't see any jittering or anything like that. Well, well, that was a beautiful sine wave oscillator. Let us, uh, what? About 54 or 5 years old. And then there's uh, the classic missing inchy screws because I live in a metric world. And this is, uh, of course, uh, an American product. So all the screws there are, of course, inchy screws. And then I just put in new nice inchy screws. So everything is perfectly fine. Previous owners never never have these things uh, stocked and they don't save it so there's only one little last thing to do with this unit and that is to put on my little classic sticker here and it is ready to go back to storage so thank you very much for watching i hope to see you soon again now i'll find some Something else to play with. Bye-bye.